Visit Bloomberg.com slash... roll out of here is today the day we die hey low frequency hi Shemay how are you hey Ronnie how you doing We got traffic tonight, eh? Let's try not to get T-boned. Okay, dude, come on, come on, come on. We got lots of traffic. I'm screwed. Can I move? No, I can't. Do I have a chance? It's some weird old truck coming down the road. I got a woman carrying her baby. High alert, high alert. We're going to have to go for perfect timing here, or else we take the kid out. It's one thing or the other. Here we go. Cross yourselves. Boom! Oof. Always adventurous. Please hit the thumbs up button if you're coming in. Yeah, go ahead. Pull out there. There you go. There you go. Yeah, please hit the thumbs up button. It is very appreciated. Hey, Margie, how are you tonight? Buenos noches. Buenos tardes. Bien tardes. All right, we're going to walk across the parking lot. We got a car coming in. It doesn't matter. I got my girlfriend with me. We got our big gulps. We're all happy. We got a big night planned. We're all set. I'm thinking about her. She's thinking about me. What's for dinner tonight? We're going to maybe make a pot pie. All right, let's take Ali Mo. Alan Chantry, how are you? Be right back. We could have rain on the way. You love this time of season? I got kind of mixed thing. I mean, uh, I love October. We're almost in October.
like I don't really know if it's going to rain tonight or not. I turned off the sprinkler system. I just don't know. Hello, everybody. Happy Monday, September 25th, 2020. There's Cindy Russo there. Thank you, Cindy, for uh, your comments today. You can change your line to all message, see all comments. Who's here, but doesn't she have a nice place? And she's uh, her and her husband are very gracious hosts. I guess that's the best way I could put it. Very gracious and uh, very welcoming. Hey, Maggie. So I hope everybody enjoyed. Uh, hundreds of more people will be enjoying that as we move into overnight in tomorrow and once again i feel myself very honored to have gotten an invite to go up there yeah i think we all like to fall i don't know it's been kind of a it's kind of been kind of a demanding summer maybe not so much here but around a lot of the nation i never know what the fall is going to bring Always sirens, I know that. I think she, I think Cindy does a lot to really decorate it nicely too and to make it very inviting. It's the kind of place that uh, there's a lot of pride exhibited in doing it. Oklahoma rootstock there. That's the deal. So we're not going to be out too, too long here. We might do a little choose. I haven't quite decided yet. I was over at the church. I got the surprise of my life today. Uh, this morning, I told you guys about the speaker incident over there. Somehow or another, Somebody thought it would be great to mount a speaker on a composite block wall without the box blocks being secured by any more than a finished nail and a little bit of glue. And that thing came flying off. So I got up there to glue and screw the block on so it could properly support the speaker. I wanted it to wait a week to cure and I go in today work on it. Somebody had mounted the speaker back up on the wall and it's a 25 pound speaker with torque screws. And I thought to myself, you know what? These guys probably just threw the speaker up and just didn't even bother to check it or wire it because the wires got torn out. And yep, that's exactly what they did. They just popped that speaker right back up there and tested it with the microphone this morning. And the thing is dead as a door now. And I just told the other guy, well, I'm not going to take it down and rupture myself trying to get this thing down uh, up here. So you got the other speaker, so you're just going to have mono sound. That's the way it goes, right? So you don't even need speakers in this place anyway, the small chapel part. So that's how my day went. So I left and said I'll come back Friday and start cleaning the gutters out and sealing them for winter. So, not so much of a productive day on that front, but I thought to myself, man, don't, don't, you know, if you don't know, it's like they said in Glen Gary, Glen Ross to Kevin Spacey. Like uh, Al Pacino says, man, if you don't know what the MF score is, then keep your mouth, you know, don't touch anything unless you know what's going on. Right? You're really not doing anybody any favors. So, that kind of was a little, made me a little mad today. And I'll go, and you can see we got an unusual night. We got cloudiness, which is very unusual. Yeah, too many cooks spoil the broth. I mean, they're well-intentioned. They probably thought that they were doing a good thing, but you couldn't see, you know, I mean, you couldn't see that the wires were torn out of the back, right? Because when it fell down, 25 pounds of speaker, 
at an eight foot height, when it falls off the wall, it's it's tend to rip the wires, right, and all that. Well, we'll just put the thing back up. Uh, never touch anything if you don't know what the score is, right? So I just say, uh, you know, they might come to me later and say, yeah, could you, you know, could you do it? And then I gotta, then I gotta put cords all around it and raise it up through an eye bolt in the ceiling. And I mean, I just don't want to go through all that. I just, you know, I just can't. If you don't know what the score is, just leave stuff alone. So that set things back, and I'm not going to do anything else in that regard. I got bigger fish to fry. Uh, let's park this here. Hey, Amanda, how are you? So we are going to be trying to knock out a mini pot pie today. I decided to make it in this skillet. We'll probably run over and get some new spray. Even now, I said, "But oh, you can you can do that with the um, you can do that with the shortening in the pan." I I don't know. I like my spray, right? That's, that's what I like, right? Hey, T T O. I haven't seen you in a while. How you been? I'm looking at TV for somebody, and they had a Mickey Mouse tour all the way. Yeah, I mean, you got to start over again. Hey, Tanya, how you doing, sweetie? I mean, uh, I guess they thought they were doing a favor, right? So, right. I just can't even imagine having to remove that. I don't know if I can, I can, there's no way to fix it from the back, right? So, uh, it just, just kind of really torqued me out a little bit today. But, uh, right, I'm not going to, uh, you know, screw it. I don't want anybody touching my work on the, on the site. Good to see, yeah, good to see you, T.O. Lights, it's great to see you. So Friday, I think that's Blackbird. Yeah, that's Blackbird on these new wheels there, dog. I don't know where the heck he's gone. I don't know. But that's how my day, so I expected to be there about an hour and go live and show you guys rigging it back up and putting it up at, uh, was already mounted. They threw they threw away my hardware too, my my nice screws and stuff. All oh, this just threw it away and used a couple torque screws. So, uh, well, at least I got a chance to um, glue and screw the block on the on the board to keep it from coming down. So I guess that's good enough. But what a waste of space now. So I guess we're going to go over and we're going to get some, uh, we're going to try to get some spray, see if we need any other goodies from the, uh, uh, if you guys have never been to a restaurant supply store, it's a, it's a very unique experience and I always encourage people, if you live in a town of any sizable size or you're within one of a population of maybe 25, 50,000 people or so, you're probably going to have a restaurant supply store that supplies to the trade. Everything from pans and pots and dishes to paper towels to, uh, uh, to meats, to big commercial meats, uh, big roast and, and all kinds of, you know, five pound bags of uh, pepperonis and stuff. So we'll go over there today. It's kind of a unique experience to go in a place like that. Ah, so we might enjoy that. Sometimes you look at somebody's Mickey Mouse and I think, what the heck were they thinking? I find that a lot when it comes to plumbing. If people will, when, when people try to do plumbing, they'll put in six or seven turns and use use a zillion 90 degree elbows and stuff and just it ends up looking like it ends up looking like some kind of ladder <laughs> from now on somebody sounds sick as a dog so what's the deal on the COVID everybody's all freaking out about the COVID and I uh, got a lot of comments today Rosie did you see interest rates spike up today uh, 4.54 percent yes i did uh, amazingly stocks held pretty firm in the face of that so we might be reaching a temporary uh peak in terms of a rise and maybe get a 
little fall back here I'm not sure but the, the trend is upward and I don't know if we're gonna close down on uh, I don't know if we're gonna reach a budget agreement or not I don't know. it's almost irrelevant at this time whether we do or not because it's only gonna keep things going until you know for another month and another month and it just continues just continues to kick the can down the road and meanwhile the amount of spending just goes up you can imagine when you've borrowed billions and billions and tens and hundreds of billions of dollars at half a percent one percent interest and then that matures and then you've got to go out and and uh, raise new capital only now you have to raise it at five percent right four percent five percent it really takes it really blows a hole in a budget right really blows a hole in the budget and that's becoming a that's becoming an expenditure that's almost as large as defense spending hey naomi how you doing that's interest service on the debt that's how big a component of that uh I don't know what the way out of it is. Or, well, Rosie, what do you think? What do you think that they could? They can't do anything, man. What are you gonna do, right? Somebody's got to take the hit somewhere. That's all I know. Sounds like everybody's got COVID over there. So, all right, politics as usual. Uh, hey Joe, good to see you. Thanks for the nice comments on everything. I hope that uh, I hope that you're doing well, and everything's going good for you down under. I see you guys had a very. I guess you were. I don't know how your. I don't know how your uh, summer was down under. I didn't really hear that many people complain. Well, I think Shimei, The more interest rates go up, the more they provide competition for uh, stocks. So the more people were drawn. Like if we hit uh, five and six percent on the ten-year, that's always a point where uh, you know it's going to act like a large siphon and pull a lot of money out of uh, stocks because of the low-risk aspect of five six percent return. Well, we don't know. I hope they do something about the government shutdown. Thanks for letting me around with you. You're welcome, Tony. Good to see you. I don't know. I mean, all they can do is kick the can down the road. But, you know, imagine that you're in a district and you run for Congress and you tell people, we can't kick the can down the road anymore, people. And if you elect me... I'm going to be, I'm going to do this, 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 and this. I'm going to make sure that we have a balanced budget, that we get federal spending under control. Well, you know what? Now you better get your cup on, boys, and grab your nuts and see what you're made out of here. Right? Right? Are you going to walk the walk, or did you just talk the talk? Right? And I'm guessing these people, given when push comes to shove, they always blink. Right? Because some gassy grandmas back in the district start complaining right that, uh, you know their social security got mucked with or something and then they hit the panic button cooking Sonoma steaks from market fresh tomatoes and fresh corn shades all from market well good deal I think our markets are over it's really a shame when harvest is hitting its peak like now that there's no farmers markets around here Maybe there still is. I don't know. They used to have one at the Veterans Building, but I don't know. So, right. So because everybody's avoided and everybody's kicked the can down the road, that means it's going to be that much more traumatic and dramatic. When I think we got a year-round one here too, but it's all the way up at the Luther Burbank Center or something like that. Who I don't. I'm not going to go schlep up there and uh, right. So that's the way that stands. So meanwhile, interest rates keep rising here. Um, and there was no particular news today to drive them upward. So I was like, wow, that's a, that's, we're starting to get some really big moves. So we're already ba we're back at 2007 interest rate levels now. So what is that, uh, 16, 16 years ago? I mean that seems like forever and a day since uh, since that. So I don't know. 
But, yeah, they'll be kicking that, I think, push comes to shove. So tonight, uh, I think we're going to go over to the restaurant supply store. We're going to schlep around over there. Uh, then we're going to uh, start on our pot pie. I'm going to make the filling first. Because when you're making a pot pie, it's essential that you don't put really hot filling into pastry dough. Okay? You really have to really flash cool that stuff down. Is, is uh, At least try to get it as, at least as close to room temperature as possible so it doesn't... Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, you're, you'll have a soggy bottom for the, for the dough. I'm hungry waiting on dinner. What's for dinner tonight, babe? What is for dinner tonight, young lady? What are we doing tonight? Auto workers want a 48% raise. Well, you know, time, space, it takes two to tango, right? And uh, they have the competition of Tesla and electric car manufacturers, and they have the Japanese breathing down their back, so uh, it's, it's not going to be a pretty picture. I see the writers came back. They're off strike. Hey, Cooking Green, how are you? Hope you're doing that. I'm not uh, dead yet, but I'm well. Oh, come on. I saw your video. You were out there uh, cooking it up, your outdoor setup. Yeah, you're not dead. Come on. Good to see you. Uh. So that's the essential thing tonight. We have to make the uh, guts of it. So we're going to use, uh, and this is not, hey celebrity, this is not recipe doodly do do. This is just demonstration cooking, okay? Because I don't, I don't measure stuff when I when I cook. And if I want to do like a standard cooking video, then I will always talk about how much of this or how much of that or leave a link in the description box. We're trying to make a chicken pot pie and cook it on an outdoor grill tonight, which I don't know if it's been done any other place on an outdoor barbecue grill, but I'll be darned. We're going to try it tonight. Therefore, it's essential that you have a baking stone in the bottom of your grill on top of the uh, grill the cast iron grill part it's very very important so we'll see how we'll see how it tastes I'll give you a couple little hints and hacks to deepen the flavor yeah you're a measure that's good um, you know I'll just I'll just uh, spice and then do a little taste See where we are on the spice and then uh, we'll move it from there how you doing luther good to see you i got my 7-eleven coffee it's very comfortable uh tonight used to have a soggy bottom now it just depends that's it uh, well this is the biggest problem people have when they make pies is they don't know how to properly cook the bottom and it ends up being a doughy mess guy was waiting for somebody to come and give him some gas and he was in a test and he had a generator so he could charge his Tesla. Good. My goodness. That might make a lot of sense for safety reasons to have a little Honda 2000 watt generator. I've not had the motivation to make videos today. Well, it's alright. I've been busy. Uh, kind of between kind of between adventures here right now, so it's fine. I've, I'm in a, writing a book. I'm on my second write of uh, my second draft. I'm on chapter nine, so I haven't been wasting my time making that baby smooth as silk. Uh, hey, sure not. How are you? Tell people, go ahead, man. Remember we were here last time, the guy goat head with his uh, big truck and he ran right into the back of the Honda. He went head all right. 
<laughs> Imagine turning around and you see that truck drifting, right? It's like, oh man, what am I going to do now? I can't stop it. And the sad thing is that uh, that truck's bumper was so high, there was no way the five mile an hour bumper on the Honda was going to save it. That baby crushed right into the right into the nuts there, right on the back, right? all into the headlights and all that. So, not the tail lights, I mean, and all the all the expensive back metal work of that <clears throat> kind of kooky. So I hope everybody had a good day. I miss you with the long hair. So good. No, I don't like. I don't. You know. I'll be dressing once in a while, honey, but I just don't, I, I like comfortable and easy to just get a trim and maintain the same length and everything, so. Yeah, the lady, the ladies have been kind of raging, right? <laughs> so I'll be dressing once in a while, don't worry. It's just like everybody, there's always lots of different opinions. I should save that for sound effects. Yeah, save that for sound effects. So I'm more used to it. Yeah, thank you, Callie. Uh, it's been a surprisingly easy uh, transition. You know, everybody's been uh, super supportive because I was thinking last night, you, hey, who's your, how are you? You guys, yeah, this was from uh, Gracie. Uh, Tammy Hernandez, I'm very grateful uh, for her sending. You may think I'm always uppity and happy and happy-go-lucky. I have my dark times, too. You know, I had a little bit of a mini meltdown uh, last night. You know, you're always kind of second-guessing yourself. It's like, oh, you know, uh, you know, I hope I did the right thing or whatever. And, uh, you know, did I make a mistake or whatever? And you're always going to have those kind of uh, things because this is when you've gone 12 years and you've lived your life a certain way, you don't just turn on a dime like it's a, like it's a sports car, right? You, it takes quite a while for your mind to go around. Hey, Terry, thank you for watching, my friend. It takes a while for the emotions and the, uh, everything else to catch up with uh, with what was done. Hey, Lori, quick question. Do you think you're seeing more non in Santa Rosa? I'm just curious. If I know about that. Uh, no more than usual. We've always had uh, like 40% Mexican population here. But I can't see I've seen any more because people that are coming from Venezuela and other places, they're... they're um, they're moving towards like uh, places like New York and on the East Coast. Hey, Justin. Yeah, they can on how hard it is. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a big thing, you know. I mean, we have people that come in once in a while, right? You turn your back on the trans community, and uh, you're a traitor, and this is that booty. How are you, babe? Good to see you. But I'll tell you this, guys. If you ever try to live your life according to somebody else's desires and wishes, you're going to have, unless, I mean, it's, uh, and I'm, not, I'm talking about it in a real, in a real world kind of way that you're trying to conform to what uh, society expects and stuff like that. You're going to be a very, you're going to be a very unhappy person. The weather's just lovely, isn't it nice? So the migrants are not being bad or checked for, well. I'm just saying, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Fat, it's the time we live in. And the biggest signal was sent to South and Central America. An enormous bell was rung that shall be heard all over Central and South America and Mexico that America's open for business. All right. You can imagine tonight, having now heard that half a million Venezuelans will be, uh, thank you, Cindy, half a million uh, Venezuelans will now be welcomed into America. Everybody that's, everybody that's got two feet that can travel or a POS vehicle that can move is like, let's pack up and head north, right? They know. 
that uh, give us your tired, your poor, your hungry masses. Uh, yeah, we might have a little rain tonight, Justin. I'll believe it when I see it. It's been a threatening day today, though. But, uh, so I think there's going to be a full-on flood tide, tide, and it's going to... Uh, we're going to have an, we're going to have a real assimilation problem on our hands. Uh, Eric Adams in New York City is underwhelmed. See, before it was very easy to sit into New York State and fire cheap shots at Texas and California and New Mexico and Arizona. Hey, Ma Rich. And, uh, it's very easy from a distance to uphold human rights, right? The, the freedom of individuals to pursue economic uh, fulfillment or whatever. It's always good when you're 2,000 miles away. Hey, it's easy to stand up. The AOCs, all these, Chuck Schumer, all these people can stand up and say how glorious it is. But man, look at how they squeal when these people start landing on their uh, doorstep. I mean, and I'm going to be honest, a good percentage of these people are bringing their criminal habits with them, and they're not talking about what's going on at the border or women being assaulted on the other side. Uh, we only have so much facility to process so many people, okay? And what goes on in the southern side of the fence, we can't really, we're not really able to control that, but we've now set the message forward to we're open for business. So I would imagine by mid-November, there's going to be a flood tide of people coming from uh, South America. Uh, figuring it'll only be a matter of time before there's a general amnesty declared and anybody that it's there is going to be allowed in. So uh, that's going to take a toll. How you been, Ma Rich? How are you? Hey, Magic Art. How are you? Good to see you, my friend. Magic Arts got some real talent. Yeah, well, everything's Marxism today here. Hey, Judy. When you have government involved in everything from, uh, you know, daycare to school lunch programs to uh, after school programs and higher education and medicine and involved in every aspect of licensing and regulation of uh, uh, of uh, business and finance and uh, capital markets and crowding out other borrowers with the need to raise money yeah I would say that you're you've become the most Marxist nation in the history of the world and I've said that for months now. right right everything from employment to uh, you know and uh, welfare to uh, everything, workers comp, the whole deal, uh, disability, everything, right? right? It's the whole deal. It's it's the exact opposite of 1932, when there was nothing, nothing. As I've said repeatedly, at that time, the last place that anybody would have ever thought to look for help was the United States government. They would have figured that all they do is collect customs taxes and defend our borders, that's it. Even education is very localized and everything like that. It's not a good scenario, it isn't. Yeah, but you know it's coming. How you do in respect, but slug bug, you know it's coming. We just, when you, when we said we're gonna take in half a million Venezuelan people, and I, I love, you know, I don't know Venezuelan people, I enjoy the food. I've had and reviewed arepas, which is delicious little, like empanadas. But I'm telling you, half a million people's a lot. That's half a million people that got to that half a million people that got to eat. They got to have a roof over their head, and uh, they're going to need medical care and. Gonna average, it, it's gonna cost about what half a half a billion dollars. Well, thank you, Luther. I appreciate that. Probably half a billion dollars a month to take care of their uh, needs. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna exert a tremendous downward pressure on 
on uh, uh, wages too. A really depressing uh, lever on wages and things like that. And it's going to lead to exploitation and trafficking, and it's it's it has its own set of problems. Well, I don't think they're going to be able to vote in. Uh, it's quite a process to uh, to vote. Plus, we'll still be paying for our insurance, but we they will get it all free. Well, uh, I doubt if any of them have the ability to pay for it. And I guess if we let them in, we're basically saying we'll take it on. It's charitable. But that's a big blob of people to be uh, brought in, plus your normal immigra immigration and all that. And what it also does is it allows these people to jump the queue. And there's people like uh, in other nations that uh, have waited for years for their time to come up and to be allowed to immigrate to the United States. What do we tell those people? Why do you think people were initially to red states like Florida? Uh, I don't know. One reason is because they're, they're certainly closest there. But my point is, you know, being good neighbors and being generous has a tremendous cost to it. Hey, Alex. And you're going to hear more. We're already hearing these stories of people that are, just, you know, women that are being assaulted at the borders, waiting on the other side, and there's no law and order and every. You're just seeing raw people and uh, raw humanity down there. Uh, you know, it is, it is what it is. I mean, everybody wants a better life, and now you've rung a major bell that says, everybody get on your horse and start heading north. Right, the land of opportunity is open for business, so it's going to be like, I think it's going to be a land rush. Oh, thank you, Judy. Her home is breathtaking. It's beautiful. So you have to temper compassion with common sense. Right. So, you know, and then uh, the, the Biden administration has to be really careful of bad optics in this. If, uh, you know, stuff gets out of control, and it's they got to be careful. It's going to bend back on them, right? They're just going to say it looks like a mess. Well, that's what I'm saying. If it backfires, it's going to be really problematic. Uh, it will keep poor people. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just, it's going to, I'm worried about the depressive effect on employment. Because these people are going to migrate into jobs of physical labor and uh, things like that where they can be they could be potentially more exploited than at home right it's not above employers here to uh, do that Let's see uh, find a way to blame I don't know I don't know I do believe in sense so I do believe we need to increase our population but we need to do it sensibly. So what we have is people that can least afford to have children or having children and those most financially able are choosing not to have children. So it just creates a circle of doom. It just uh, exerts a downward force on the next generation. So that's, that's real Marxism there. Those, yeah, those dogs were cute. Did you see they were starting to attack me? I was like, woo, 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 woo. <laughs> right? I thought I'm going to get eaten here. So we'll see how it all plays out. I think it's going to be a very interesting fall and uh, winter. I guess if you're a thinking American and you worry about economics, then you would be very right to worry about uh, how much more we can load on a federal budget before we start cranking up the printing press again and we just move up to a higher level of uh, inflation again. Right. Yeah, the dogs were in attack mode. Their world, yeah, the world's gonna look different than ours, right? Oh, I know, Sandy, I'm just joking. I'm the dog whisperer. <laughs> the 
dogs were wonderful. I mean, it says Zelda and Max. Two great dogs. So, and then we throw in an election and we got all kinds of uh, cross currents here. I'm really kind of surprised that uh, Biden has chosen to run for re-election. I don't know. I don't, I don't. I don't see happy times ahead. I really don't see uh, uh, how things are going to get better for him, especially with interest rates up so high now. I mean, it's it has to be having an effect on home sales and uh, cars. Because what's going to happen with the people's ability to purchase a car, right? If we give 48% pay raises over three years for auto workers and stuff like that. I mean, you're going to have to have a mortgage to buy a car. You're literally going to have, uh, you know, a 15-year payment on a depreciating asset. Unless pets are not allowed, Publix, Home Depot, and Lowe's says on so must provide. Uh, man, down here in Santa Rosa and Sonoma County, man, people take their dogs everywhere. Into Lowe's, into Home Depot. I don't really see them as too much of a problem. They don't really like them to be in grocery stores, right, on account of health problems, but, uh, you know. A lot of dogs are cleaner than people. Meet up with Naomi now. And, oh, I, I, yeah, they're good. We also meet Jamie too. Uh, uh, hopefully, so that'll be coming up in October. Uh, that'll be great because I want to make sure it's fall season in Sonora. That we have a little bit of a few crisp nights and we have some colorful leaves and all that. So I'm looking forward to it too. But we have to just face the fact we may have reached that point in our issuance of debt where there's just not enough free cash in the world to uh, fund the ongoing needs of the United States relative to the rest of the world. And the only way that that keeps going is that interest rates keep rising like bait to attract more money all the time, which worsens the problem itself. So, I mean, there's only so much free capital uh, it can't come from the American people. You know, the pension funds and all that stuff are already fully invested. They're taking big hits on these bonds and stuff. So it remains for people, nations overseas to buy. Yes, uh, snapping at customers. Owner never was asked to control. It was 30 minutes of avoidance. Well, that's a that's a total lack of that's a total lack of self awareness on that part of that person. Right. I don't really uh, right. believe that that's a, a good thing. I mean, here people, I guess Whole Foods would welcome pets. Also, the bricks coming up with their own currency. Yeah, I don't know how it's going to work out for them, T.O. I don't know how it's going to work out. <clears throat> hey, Mimi Swan, how you doing? You be careful crawling around down there. San Bernardino and places. Uh, most of his mind, I say, giving his working about work to Santa or Santa, there's no real demand for the school. So that's what I'm saying. So all they can do, all they can do is really drive down, help keep wages down. Because the incentive for restaurants and stuff, I mean, who in the hell sees in the back of a restaurant, right? Most of the people that cook in this county are probably Mexicans in the back, uh, in the back, right? making sushi doing everything so there's going to be the there's going to be the incentive to just pull them in and pay them under the table and put them to work I mean you do the math if you start to pay 20 bucks an hour here for retail workers in California, in a mom and pop store, let's just say it's a thrift shop here. 
like a Goodwill or something like that, and you have to pay twenty dollars an hour plus workers' comp, plus your insurance on the business, uh, plus possibly health insurance and all that kind of stuff. And you have two people working, uh, say, at that mom and but that small antique store or thrift shop. You do the math. Per person fully loaded, you're probably 20 bucks an hour. You're probably looking at $30 an hour and uh, 30, 35 bucks an hour in true cost. So you have two people in there. So you're 70 bucks an hour, and you put that over a 10, 10 hour day, seven, uh, you know, 700, 800 bucks a day. It's like, how are you going to make the nut? Right? How are you going to make the nut on that? Which we do protect our money and economy. Just follow the interest rate train up. Right? It's the most attractive place to be for the greatest amount of money right now. The AI thing, I suspected that that would be very overblown. And that's come unhinged to a great extent. Because a little AI goes a long way. I don't need a hundred different types of AI, right? I need people to help me apply the AI to my business, not the AI itself. So, a little bit overblown on that regard. So, I think just following the interest rates up. Keep it short. Keep rolling it. Uh, 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 hey Denise, how are you? Folks, uh, opinions are going to vary on Trump and Biden. I understand that. It's fine. Everybody can have a different uh, opinion on it, and that's fine. We welcome everybody's. We welcome everybody's uh, everybody's opinion here, and we don't we don't disparage anybody uh, for it. It's a very difficult situation. I don't think anybody has the magic bullet. For it, so right. There's just no, like, there's no easy solutions. We've already picked the low-hanging fruit. There's going to have to be pain dished out. I don't see if anybody can think of an alternative way. I mean, uh, then let me know. Right? Speak now. Forever hold your peace. Because when you're borrowing. Uh, 200 billion plus dollars a month to close the gap I mean uh, right you're 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 having to fund the equivalent of what a General Motors takes in a year every month that's a lot of scratch you just lose perspective on how much money that is that is a that is a tremendous amount of money all right, the California budget is a hundred billion dollars a year, right? So you're like two California budgets short every month. That's a lot. So it's reaching the point now where the treasury's having difficulty uh, funding it now. Uh, just concur to that they're talking about Biden is no bueno on the uh well, it's, it's welcome here. I mean, we're equal opportunity. Nobody's ever been kicked off of here for, uh, for being negative about Trump, positive about Trump, negative for bad Biden, or positive about Biden. I'm just encouraging people to look above party right now and just see that, uh, you know, we, we need to, uh, we're going to be called on to be tremendously charitable in the future. It's going to be upon us to take care of our neighbors and others. It's not going to be, uh, the United States is going to be less and less able to do that. Right? And, uh, you know, woe to us the day that somebody comes out and says the truth, right? We just reached the end of our financial resources. Uh, Kevin McCarthy said that. I put up that post. On my community post, it's uh, our finances are a fisk are a train wreck. So please hit the thumbs up button if you're coming in. I just try to be logical about stuff. If I could think of any viable solution, I would put it out there. And 
here we are, we're worried about the dress code in the Senate and this and that. And, uh, you know, if you've got people that have suffered strokes and, uh, you know, the president repeats himself quite often. I mean, it's a, it's a major cause for concern. Right. Hey North, how you doing? Thank you, my friend. Yeah, please hit the thumbs up button. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> Unless you think we're alone, we're not. I mean, China's got tremendous problems, and uh, it's all over. The base rate will go before the end of the year with a state foot not. Politics will never save this world. Well, I hate to say it, you you see the you see the soft underpinnings of democracy now. Where eventually, the longer a nation is Republican and representative government, the more people will vote that nation out of existence over time. It's inevitable that they will start voting themselves treats from the treasury. They will want to pay less, and they will demand more. Thank you, thank you, Ronnie, our standard disclaimer here. Right, it's human nature to want more for less. That's never going to change. Ooh. The nuclear codes, 64. Yeah, you're gonna get what you vote for, right? If you want more, 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 and to pay less taxes, well, you can't live in California, that's for one, because you're already maxed out in the taxes. I mean, we're paying almost $6 a gallon for fuel. I mean, <clears throat> I couldn't believe somebody told me the other night they defeated a tax uh, proposition somewhere in California. I was like astounded. They actually voted. They actually voted not to tax themselves on something. I'm like really? I can sense in California that the tide is starting to turn. I'm gonna look at the title, honey. Look at the title of the, of the stream tonight, babe. I can sense the tide is starting to turn here a little bit towards the entrenched political party in this state. I'm sensing that a lot of uh, Latinos, a lot of Mexicans and people like that, uh, and Asians are starting to turn against the Democrat uh, party. Hey, Linda. That's just my feeling from ground level, just talking to people in the hood and surprise me. Right? really surprised me the uh, stickers that are starting to show up on cars and stuff because people can only sustain so much taxation <clears throat> uh, so we'll probably get a regime change coming up but uh, sadly, the damage has already been locked in for the long term. I wish that wasn't the case, but uh, it's the case. We're experts at legislating people's rights, but we're not so much expert at uh, keeping our fiscal house in order. Uh, I'm waiting to see how Hawaii go. Oh, man. Hawaii is going to be always it's going to be as reliably Democrat as Maryland, New York, right? Illinois. We're making a pot pie tonight. <sighs> Massachusetts. Connecticut. Vermont, the old reliable guard. After how someone responds, well, right. I mean, 
everybody's always quick to point the finger after major fires like they did here in Santa Rosa, right? <clears throat> right. We always want somebody else to be blamed for something. I had a pot pie the first time here. Didn't know if they still made it. They do. It was okay. Well, that's cool. It was okay. That's a good thing. Well, there's nobody around tonight. Yeah, I think the era of free money, cheap money, is at an end. Round them out. But we may never know. Yeah, you have some uh, some bond funds that are down almost 50% in value. So that's a danger of buying. That's what I said two years ago. You better start lightening up on long-term securities. All right, there's nowhere else to. They can't go any lower in yield. All right, and there's a lot of pain on the upside. So you better you better guess right. I guess these Ford Broncos, they're starting to grow on me a little bit. I like the teriyaki bowl of Jack in the Box. Uh, just finishing work. I'm more like a helper. Hope you're doing good tonight. Well, we need helpers too, right? There's no shame in being a helper. That's how I learned most of what I learned was keeping my eyes open and then just schlepping wood around a job site and stuff. Right. But I was pretty mad that somebody else hung this speaker up without even bothering to wire it and fix the wiring inside. So you got to you got a dud speaker hanging on the wall. Ah, idiotic. Know what the deal is before you touch anything. got to get across town. It's goat head, man. Go ahead. There you go. Don't mind me. I still got this $30 left at Chevy's here I want to use. Uh, uh. Tomorrow night I'll probably go bike riding, so I might stop at Chevy's and get some carry out dinner uh, tomorrow night. I don't know. Man, I'm not going to go up this way anymore. Right? When you can go up this way, why well, go the other way? Yeah, we're going to see one tomorrow. Wow, that guy on the scooter just doesn't even slow down, right? I could have pinned the guy right there. Yeah, it should be a good night for riding tomorrow night. So I'm going to have to air up the bike and do all that. See, we got a semi-threatening sky tonight. Yeah, please like and subscribe. We're on our way for a fun night tonight.
we got the uh, politics out of the way and the economics. Vote however you like, just make sure you vote. I'll be doing. I'll probably be out in the bath for a while, showing people some of the cool lights and decorations. Bird, uh, I'll buy the candy, and Bird likes to give it out when the people come to trick or treat, so he'll enjoy that. All right. Uh, two weeks or so when I get back from LA, and we'll be going to the pumpkin farm. I'll take Bird to the pumpkin farm. We'll get it. Take Bobby too. We'll get a couple pumpkins. Carve them up and put our decorations up. And I know Cobra John's going to be doing it up as usual with his first class. Yeah, we'll have a good time. We'll be doing some cemetery streams as we get into later October, particularly November. I always said Halloween should be in November to really be the scariest. Hey Barry, how you doing today? Oh damn, I shouldn't have come down this street. Got this all torn up. somebody down at the park. I don't know, we got, looks like our typical over response here. I don't know where that uh, ambulance went. He just stopped. Yeah, I don't know what's going on at the park. I don't know. Every time the ambulance goes out, they got to roll the fire trucks out. I've never seen a city with so much emergency action as this one in my lifetime. I thought Baltimore was bad. Holy crap. Bobby Kimball, what's going on? How are you doing? Yeah, I'm just saying it's an over response and then you come before the city council and say how overtaxed the resources are. Oh man. Everybody's gotta get their uh, everybody's gotta get their cut. You might as well not even have a police department, they were saying here, because shit, they don't even show up anymore. It's all a money grab. And they'll, I guarantee you there'll be another ballot measure to raise the sales tax another half a percent. will be a 10%. <sighs> yeah, well, I think we're going to be getting a touch of rain tonight. So I turned off the sprinkler system. Figured I'd save the well water because you know we're gonna have some hot sunny sun or sunny days in October. That's for sure. It's kind of inevitable. All right, there's that spook house over there. All right, let's do a little field trip. Hello, Katie. How are you tonight? Gotta do a little field trip here. 
see. We got to take advantage of this trip. Yeah, we'll get a we'll get some Indian summer. I hope you feel better, honey. Hey, Simon. I think there's a lot of COVID going on right now. Thank you, sir. Nice gentleman. Chop shives. See, we might need to get another. Uh, we probably need to get another Italian seasoning. I don't know. This is the quantity you want to buy it in compared to a store. We probably need some pepper. That's the big boy. You want those Snickers, huh? Do 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 do. There's the Italian seasoning. This is good stuff, guys. This you get 15, 12 bucks for something like that. That's gonna last a long time. You're gonna get better value than going out and screwing around with basil and right. Welcome to St. Basil's. All right, here we go. We got tostadas. I don't know what they cost up there. Half the stuff doesn't even have price tags on them. Let's make sure we achieve our objective. You know, sometimes I've come in here and I've totally forgot why in the hell I even came in. And I leave and I go home and I'm like, you know what? TJ or Diego, if you can call on line one, it's uh, somebody from Nitro. TJ or Diego, call line one. Thank you. Pick it up, Diego. Let's go, mate. I totally forgot what I came in. Yeah, I wanted to go there last time, but I couldn't find it on the, it wasn't quite open yet. Let's see. Classic cornbread. Basmati rice. Ooh, that's the good stuff, guys. You want some good eats? Basmati from the foothills of the Himalayas, right there. Oh, we're going to have this music. We'll probably get a match today. That's right. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Where in the heck? Oh, here's the spray. Let's see. This is really hand coating. How much are these? Four nineteen. This this stuff is crap. This stuff is absolute crap. We're gonna try this one. I hope that does the job because the other stuff was just total and complete crap. Hey. Right. Sauerkraut. I like sauerkraut, but uh, it gives me a touch of the wind. All right, there's what the boss likes whole dill pickle spears. <laughs> Imagine that. That's the whole dill pickles right there, baby. That's it. Ooh, 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 ooh. 
we love our Simon sesame oil blend never get a blend never ever ever get a blend of sesame oil get the real 100% sesame oil if you're gonna do a um, stir fried rice 100% pure don't screw around with crap all right Tuto bene canola and extra virgin. Don't get blended anything, guys. You're getting you're you're being ripped off. All right. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You can get a whole case of that for twenty four sixty nine. That's probably like what uh, six cans. So you get thirty six pounds of tomatoes there for twenty four bucks. I don't think we need anything back here. We love our Simon. But they always have cool stuff to look at here. So you kind of take your time and you look around a little bit. Pours, strainers, bottle openers, all that stuff you can never really find anywhere else. You can usually find it in these places for uh, squeezing limes and lemons. Yeah, pot pies, bro. We're going to be knocking out one tonight. God willing, and the creek don't rise, and the old mule don't kick off on the way to the mine. Right? We're all going to be rich. Let's see what we got down here. There's the big sizes of onions and stuff. What's that? 129 bucks for a bag. 27.59 for taters. Onions ain't cheap anymore. Onions ain't cheap anymore, guys. I'm not I'm not BSing you. Let's see what the pistachios look like. Uh, 14 bucks is a little aggressive. Don't think that everything's gonna be cheap. The real deal with this place is you're gonna find what you need. Okay, that's the real upside of these places is that you're going to find exactly what you need. Uh, let's see, I don't think we already, did we already look down there? Yeah, I think we already looked down there. Okay. Let's see what we got down here. Any goodies here? We I think we don't need anything down here. She's stocking up there. Hola. Hola. You got a real load there, huh? Thank you. We're not going to get down that aisle. We got all the beans and stuff down here. Asian food. Chinese noodles. You can get some really good buys on this stuff. This is a this is like a commercial grocery for uh, for restaurants and things. Restaurant supply house. Sesame seeds, coconut milk. Fortune cookies, guys. You wonder where the restaurants get them? Right here. How you go? How you go? That lousy soy sauce. They don't have the uh, Pearl River soy sauce, which is the good stuff. Honey, artichoke hearts. Hey, Leah, how you doing, sweetie? This is for big commercial buyers here. Yeah, I'm going to be looking at, we're going to be checking out the shrimp. It's got to be a good deal. I mean, it's going to be hard to beat Grocery Outlet. I'm telling you, Ronnie, that's like, uh, right. I can't stress, I can't stress to you how, how good a deal it is over there.
what we got up here. We got uh, all of chocolate pudding ready to serve, marshmallows. Well, that's what I'm saying. You got to be very careful of quantities because you can be buried in this stuff. Right? Milk chocolate chips. Five pounds, which isn't bad for 27 bucks. Right? Oh, here's, we're going to get a big raisin. That, see, that's a good deal. That is a good deal. Four pounds of those babies. That's a good deal. For 11 bucks, I'm used to paying like five dollars for uh, like two pounds. So that's a good deal. Here's where you get all your flowers. Oats, Bob's Red Mill, good oats, good company. All of our sugars. I used to come over here to get all the sugar for moonshining over here. 50 pound bags humping that crap around. I can't tell you how many batches of moonshine I made. Pancake mix, don't need that. We don't need baking flour, we don't need nothing over here we got some flour from Archer Daniels Midland on sale here this is uh, $10.99 for 25 pounds so you're gonna pay five dollars in a store for five pounds right just to show you if you bake a lot of bread, hey Nino, how you doing? And it makes a lot of sense to buy these for 11 bucks for 25 pounds. How are you going to beat that? And 11.79 for uh, what is that? Salt. Then you got your uh, high protein flours. Milk powder. Karen, can you have the front, please? I'm about to take off here in a second. Karen, to the front. Thank you. All, all purpose institutional. Some is bleached, some is unbleached. And this is the very low protein pastry flour, very soft. Here. So they have it all. I think we're going to have to get a cornmeal here. My cheese balls, my cheese balls. There's all the big meats, the ribeyes, the tri-tips, all that, the big roasts in there, all that stuff. My cheese balls, my cheese balls. Here's all the popcorns and all the snacks. Magic mushroom popcorn here. 50 pounds. 50 pounds. They have something called popcorn salt. I mean, what the hell is that compared to regular salt, right? Any idea on that, Ronnie? What's the deal on that? We got all of our nuts here but they did nobody sells like uh, bags of peanuts anymore right wait a minute i just lied but i'm not taking uh five freaking pounds of it All right. there's no way i'm taking that way too much lollipops uh, let's see 1079 that's the big boy there five pounds three pounds you know how I love gummy bears. Boom! Right in the carts. You're not going to find them that cheap anywhere. All right. If Cheryl S. was here, this would be a good object lesson in shopping for her. We don't have a lot of people in line tonight, too. That's good. We got all our bar mixes. So you know why I love shopping over here because you can find it all and sometimes you can score a decent deal sometimes you get screwed pickled eggs I don't know what it is Ronnie I thought you might just do a quick search see what the hell uh, 
popcorn salt is as opposed to salt. It seems kind of strange to me. Pineapples. Ooh. Then you have all of your stuff over here. This is the teas and drinks. This is where you want to take a good look. Beef patties. This you can get some pretty good deals. Pork sausage links. Got here oyster farm mini chicken. I don't know what the hell that is. Steaks, calamari steaks, the 3140 shrimp. 20. Here's where we checked out the shrimp. The 2125, four pounds. I just don't have the uh, capacity. I guess I'd have to make the passage to store that. Uh, let's see, where are these from? I don't know. Best aquaculture practices. All right, we'll get one. I don't know where the heck we're going to put it. We'll figure it out. All right. See, I come in here and I'm dropping a lot of money in here. All right. We you get your napkins, cleaning supplies, chicken breasts, all of this stuff. Chicken, drumsticks, thighs. They probably got wings up here too. Although, remember when wings used to be cheap? Now all of a sudden they made them like super, super, super expensive. Cheese clam chowder vegetables down here yeah i got yeah let's let's go look for the cocktail sauce that's a good thought let's go look for the cocktail sauce other than that i think we got everything we need i don't think we need to go in any place else here and half we got butter in there that's all of our dairy stuff in there see I, I scored some pretty good deals eh I don't know where we're gonna put the shrimp yeah it's a huge place so anybody that has a restaurant is usually gonna be uh, it's usually gonna be shopping in here see where the sauces and stuff are they're probably maybe they're up here I don't know uh, I don't know Tapatio Red Devil all the hot sauces yeah. we don't need any hot sauces sweet baby rays uh, steak sauce. See condiments, mayonnaise, mustard. Maybe it'll be down here. I don't know. Uh, probably right up here. Let's see if we can get a cocktail sauce. I see no cocktail sauce at all. Oh boy. Hi, caramba. Uh, let's see if this chick knows the thing out. The hell is right. Do you, have, do you have cocktail sauce here? Yes. Do you know so what? We're on aisle four. I'll find it yeah. over there. Thank you. Have a good night. Uh, aisle number four. Here we go. She knew where everything was in here. I don't want to get a 10 gallon thing. How did I miss it over here? Right. Didn't we just come here? There's chili sauce, but that ain't cocktail sauce, right? That's not cocktail sauce. 
Right. So, uh, looks like we've been ratted out here, boys. Watch yourselves. No, nope. we ain't got no cocktail sauce. Ooh, or else I'm not seeing it. Maybe it's just in a huge quantity. I don't know. Korean pepper sauce. I'll smoke. Yeah, I'm just not seeing it, guys. Are you? All right, it ain't here. All right. Today's National Daughters Day. All right, well, that was kind of a bust. Maybe she meant over here. Let's see. Pad Thai. No, this is all the Asian crap over, right? Sweet and sour sauce. Wasabi. Alright boys, looks like we've been ratted out here, so let's get going. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Grab a box over here. These things are nice to have. Grab a carton over here. Let us. now. figure out where we're gonna put that shrimp. That's for doggone sure. Tell me why 
Tell me why. Tell me why. On the city three. I want it back. I'm ready for the zombie apocalypse, man. For sure. Hello. How are you, How are you doing? Oh, not, not Good. Sing it. <laughs> there, there you go. You have a second career waiting for you. I, I could listen to this song, so. Yeah, so many people remake it, you know, it's like. All right, thank you, right, sir. Yeah, you care. have a good one, okay? Yeah, thanks. That's the way we do it. That door needs a little attention. Uh, let's see, I think we're over here. We had, uh, what did we have? We had uh, 6214, no tax at all, uh, which is good. It's the only thing this state doesn't tax is food. Look, a rather threatening looking sky tonight. Chili sauce. Yeah, I just don't have any uh, horseradish sauce on it. And I'm just telling you the truth, I'm just too lazy. I could probably make a better custom one. Right? Alright, let's, uh, let's get you guys situated and we'll get that crap unloaded. Or loaded up. There's somebody at the spook house over there. Boy, that's a scary looking operation. I think it looks like a trap house over there. Uh, yeah, I did get the spray running. I'm all set for the spray. So that was our main objective tonight. But how can I resist gummy bears, right? Tell me how, how, how. I don't know how we're going to deal with this shrimp. This might have been a stupid thing to get all this. Cause, you know, we're going to have to saw it to thaw it. Right. That might have been a dumb thing to do. But like, it, like they said, and gone with the wind. Tomorrow is another day. We're gonna have to saw that crap up is what we're gonna have to do. But all I'm gonna worry about now is finding the space to put it. That's it. Nothing else I'm gonna worry about. I guess I could partially just run water on it to loosen the individual pieces. They still won't, they'll still be frozen. <sighs> Let's not hit. We got a gassy grandma alert behind us here. Let's be careful. We're loading up our Ford over here. Oh, boy. All right. Let us uh, let us endeavor to make our way back to the ranch over here. Let's see. Are 
very spooky area here. There's some nice cars over there to potentially rebuild. But uh, this guy's got a hell of a spook house over here, I'm telling you. You can't tell me that guy's living up there. That kind of defies the imagination. All right. This is the zoo. This is the really dangerous bar here. Bobby would never take me here. Time to get cooking. We're going to have to make room in the fridge. We're going to have to uh, make room for this uh, this shrimp. This is important stuff we got here. There's a good price for the shrimp, but we got to... Uh, we'll keep that baby thawed, and then one day we'll just commit to partially just enough water to get it unstuck, and then we'll load it up into individual uh, bags. Spam is good. It's just it's anything. I mean, all spam is is ham, right? I mean, just chunks of ends of ham put together. I don't think it has any pig balls in it or anything like that, right? I think it's all right. You hate spam with a passion. Honey, I bet if I made you a dish, you would love it. If I, Lisa B, how you doing, honey? I bet if I made it my way, you'd enjoy it. Look at that threatening sky. Yeah, like everything from the rooter to the tutor in there. I don't think they put pig lips and buttholes in the spam. All right, look at this. We got a situation here. Yeah, fry it, then it's slice and have it on some toasted uh, bread with a little bit of... Uh, uh, quality mustard, man, you can't tell me you're not going to be digging that. Yeah, I don't sound like the musu bee on top of uh, the seaweed and the ham is not a good spam. It's not a good, at least to me, not a good combo. But that's just my taste. I wonder what they're going to be doing in that building. I don't know over there. It's nice to see you, Lisa. Somebody's in the crosswalk. Let's not hit them. We're excited. We got good value on shrimp. Let's not wipe anybody out in our enthusiasm. Scottish, how you doing, babe? How are you? Okay, we gave them the official goat head. Yeah, we're going to make a pot pie tonight, honey. We got our spray tonight. I'm not buying that crappy spray anymore. I found, don't ever buy the lousy stuff. I found out it doesn't really uh, non-stick. Okay, it's rather disappointing. So I'm not, I'm not going to take the bait. Right, just because it's a dollar cheaper. That's what we call a false Cheryl S. spark in there. Non-stick spray is not non-stick spray. I remember they used to keep the Crisco, which was fan-freaking-tastic. Fantastic. And then somehow I lost the spray can, and I don't know where it went. I don't have no idea where that went. stop when it's always slow. Are we going to make the light? No. Nothing going on tonight down in the square. Got lots of homeless hanging out around there. So I got some good value, but we're going to be a little stressed for freezer. Some stuff might be canned and it's been there forever. I don't know. It might be time to just sacrifice the goat in there. We might have to take one for the team. Ooh, well, I use, you know, you know me, I'm always teaching Cheryl S. how to be a value shopper. I'm about to take the pooch for water. Uh, okay, Scottish, good to see you, honey. Happy Monday.
Here's one of these weirdo electric buses. It, it sounds like a spaceship. separate it and then quickly put it in the refreeze again. Do you eat chorizo, Naomi? Boy, this is all like bus heaven over here tonight. I'm going to say this politely too, Amanda. She needs all the help she can get. All right, with all due respect. The shrimp is like uh, five pounds. Ooh. Well, see, I don't like chorizo. It's way too greasy for me, and I think sausage is far superior. Chorizo is just a... Uh, it's a... Uh, it's a sausage anyway, right? You cook chorizo and all that red joy juice comes out of it. That grease. Uh, uh. We still got the light. Let's go, let's go. Go. Uh, all right, now we're all, all right, we're all stopping here. Are we gonna go by? Are we stopping? Are we gonna get slammed? What are we gonna do? We're doing the old double hump. Cindy. Yeah, I don't like it though, Naomi. I don't like the spicing and chorizo at all. I like the sage of traditional sausage, I think. That's why we have variety in the world, right? Because people like different stuff. No harm, no fail. First thing we got to do is we got to ice this shrimp. That's like that's like our main task tonight because we don't have a lot of freezer space. Well, we do, but it's clogged up with a lot of crap. That was why Spam was developed in World War II by the Armor Packing Company. Because it could have a long life, no matter what the heat or cold or whatever. All right, let's be careful we don't get hit here. It's almost like a sucker trap. All right, here we go. We're gonna make the turn. Yeah, I bet that sausage is good. Well, we got to see. We got to take a look, honey. It's not a slam dunk to get this in there. Let's see, I don't have the Beverly Hillbillies mobile in front of the rancho tonight. So let's get you guys set up first. And then we'll get unloaded here. And then we'll figure out what we're going to do. Because we got a bit of a situation on our hands now. Our eyes might have been bigger than our freezer. But I think there's a roast in there from 2011. Uh, 
and a very threatening sky tonight. Light of my life. On Moonlight Bay, it is Cheryl's fault. She urges an overconsumption of product. Do, 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 do. Uh, here's the nice stuff that Cindy Russo sent me home with these great beans and all, and this pepper jam. This stuff is like de deliscable. Hey, Bunny. Bunny, I didn't want you to be upset, honey. Right. And I'm really, you know, I felt really bad last night. You know, I just wanted to tell you, you know, I adore you for being you, honey. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it was a lot of good deals. Yeah, you know, honey, I mean, I don't want anybody to be upset because I detransitioned, right? So, I'm nobody. All right, let's see what we're going to do here. God, this thing is being closed, man. Are you kidding me? What the heck is going on? All right, we might be at, this is, this is crap. We know this is crap. This is crap. Let's get rid of this. All right, let's go get our box. We might be able to slide that baby right here. This thing isn't even closed, by the way. What is going on? Right? Looks like maybe the freezer door wasn't closed all the way or something. So, let's see, we might be able to slide this baby. Uh, this big ass block right in here. Let's see. Oh, that baby just fit right in. All right, we got to really make sure that's closed. All right, what do we get? We got a really big pepper, okay? We got four pounds of raisins for a great price. And I like raisins on my in my oatmeal or my cereal, all that. That's a good deal. That was a great deal. We got our cooking spray, which was mainly what I wanted to get. We got a cornhole meal. Here we got that. And most important of all, the three pound big boy bag. Read it and weep, Cheryl. That's right there. All right. We're going to put this right in the can outside. Thank <laughs> you. 
let me uh, let me wash my hands here. Okay. I'll tell you guys today. I had some of this this Egyptian grape jelly. It was was very good. I don't think it has to be refrigerated. I don't know. But it was pretty doggone good. Right? Cornstarch, no, it's a very critical thing for thickening. We'll be using a bit tonight. We're gonna, we're gonna first quickly make our dough here. And wash our hands and get going over here. We don't have a ton of counter space, so it's all... We always have a situation here. Alright, let's get this set up. Because we want this to chill down while we make our... While we make our filling. Tonight... Let me use the bathroom and wash my hands. Let's push that back. We have a good angle of attack there. And we're going to use a small skillet tonight. We're going to go with a small size skillet. I think this is uh, like a 7 inch skillet there. Alright, I shall return as we get underway here. Light of my life. Nicely wash the cats are waiting out there. Right, you guys are just gonna have to hold on to your drawers. Alright, so let's get the show on the road here. Uh peppermint patties, yeah, that's cool, Nino. That is cool. Alright, let's get our bowl out. Ooh, we're gonna try to make a top and a bottom. You can cheat if you want. A lot of people will just make a top. But we're going to try to go all the way and make a... Look at the title there, babe. We're going to go top and bottom. And let's get something to drink. I don't want a beer yet. All right, I'm going to have a... Let's raise this up a little bit. So get a little bit of a better view. All right. If you want to have really crisp, flaky crust on the top and the bottom, what do we use? What do we use? What do we use? Say it. Scream it. Shout it out. What do we use? What do we use? What do we use? Uh, ooh, we use no. Hey, Cindy. We use shortening. All right. 
Anybody that's a big baker, unless you're making French food or something, shortening is always going to be your friend. We're going to use one and one half cups of APF. I wish I had lard, but the only lard we have here is the Manteca, which is terrible. It's too, it's too, um, what's the word I want to use? It, it tastes too much like ash. It's too, it's, it's too funky tasting. All right. It is too funky tasting. I don't know how to describe it. It just, it always tastes kind of rancid to me. All right, it's just not a, it's not a good taste. All right. I'd like to have a nice big institutional size can here. Yes, we do, and, and shortening has less saturated fat than butter. But because the dairy industry has more money, they succeeded in destroying people's uh, belief that uh, shortening was a better, better idea. 50% less saturated fat than butter. So we're going to put in, we're going to put in a good chunk there. I don't measure guys, this is demonstration cooking. This is not, right, this ain't no measuring. This is, this is gone by the seat of your drawers. In and outside the kitchen. Yes, you can, Amanda. <laughs> we want to take or let's flip that up a little bit so that we kind of cover that let's get our pastry cutter and these things are always good to have mine's getting a little crazy from from usage but this is it all right this is what you want to do you want to throw up a little bit of flour on top of that chunk and you want to turn this this thing actually has a vacuum on the bottom of this bowl so it grips the counter which is nice all right and i'm working that flour in just going down here till it's like pea sized chunks here that's not p-e-e -E, it's p-e-a size uh, chunks okay and the other good thing about uh, shortening is it holds its it holds up in heat which is good so it's always going to produce a nice crusty product which is exactly what you want okay all right she'll be along So we always start our, our uh, dough first, and then we come back and do our filling. We're going to actually add a little bit of pepper to our crust tonight. All right, we want the crust to have a little bit of a bang to it, okay? We're going to add a bit of salt. About a quarter of a teaspoon of salt there. That's it. And we're gonna grab some ice. We're gonna get some ice water. God. This freezer always, this ice maker always fills up. A little bit of water in here. How you doing, June? I'm gonna let that sit a minute. 
we're going to sort of stir this around a little bit so we get that salt and that pepper evenly distributed like so so our shortening's all been cut up in there okay really good June is a very hard worker we're going to make a little well in the bottom of it. We're going to pour in our liquid. About two tablespoons. And we're going to draw from the outside to the inside of the bowl. Allowing that flour, shortening, salt and pepper mixture to start absorbing the H2O here, the cold H2O. Alright, and I'm just moving it around. Let it start to get a little shaggy here. All right, you're going to add some more. Another tablespoon. I also got a little chunk of ice. That's okay. This is going to give you a really flaky dough. What we want to do is make sure that this shaggy dough picks up all the fine bits of flour, okay? Very important. Alright, so you have to adjust your water accordingly. I think one more, one more tablespoon to bring that up to about three and a half or so is going to be perfect. Alright, it's really starting to want them to come together in a ball here which is what we want to see. So I'm getting my hands in here now and I'm actually working it. Okay. No, I've never made beef empanadas, honey. And I'm just gathering this all into a bowl. I mean, all into a ball here, which we're going to wrap and we're going to pop it in the refrigerator okay don't be afraid to work it but oh be careful you don't overwork your dough and then you get a dough that won't hang together well when you go to roll it out and we've had that before okay don't be afraid what we're going to do is put that into a disc all right we're going to get some plastic and we're going to wrap that up and put it in the fridge Tomatoes didn't come out. There we go. We're going to cover that dough ball in plastic just like that. And we're going to pop that in the fridge. And we're going to let that cool off a while. We're going to wash our bowl real quick. And then we're going to go outside. We're going to start firing up our vegetables here and our chicken. If you clean as you go, it becomes a lot, it becomes a lot easier proposition. After you're done eating, you don't really feel like mucking around with cleaning too much. So clean as you go. And we're going to get set up outside. We're going to start our chicken and our veggies. We're going to use our wok. Okay, we're going to get everything we need set up. There we go. And then we're going to do it. I remember, we're making a small, relatively small size one. We're not going to need that pan for a while. Okay. So we, I think our cutting board is already outside. Let's get you guys set up out here. And then we're going to get the show on the road. Please hit the thumbs up button. We're almost at 100 here. We'll get the light turned on. All right, here we go. All right. I'm going to turn the lights on here. You think it's going to rain tonight? What's that? You think it's going to rain tonight?
I hope we're going to have enough gas. We might have to we might have to finish this off inside. Oh, free samples! Thank you. Oh, thank you, my friend. 19.99 from free samples. Thank you so much. How wonderfully thoughtful of you. Thank you. We got our cutting board. Okay, which is all set to go. Later on, we're going to clean this up and roll out our dough there. Thank you very much, my friend. How sweet of you, free samples. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me gather what we're gonna need. We have a couple of uh, garden pulled carrots here from the garden. I got uh, an onion and I got some potatoes here. And I got the chicken, I got a chicken breast. So we're going to start prepping this and we're going to be cooking all this up first. Right, this is from our own rancho garden here. No potatoes. We got the chicken. We're gonna get our olive oil out. Let's put this baby over here. So we have a view of that. There we go. Yeah, um, M Wall donated it today. That was that was nice to M Wall. Got some chicken broth here. Chicken stock. 
which you're going to need. Black pepper. Hey, James. Salt. Got some olive oil. And very important for deepening flavor is rice wine vinegar. Okay. So let's start to get the, let's start to get our vegetables prepared here. And if we run out of uh, gas here, we can always finish it off inside. We're also going to get some garlic too. And I think we're going to open a new garlic. It's very, remember, it's very important that you chill down your dough first. And then we're going to swap it out. We're going to chill this stuff down when we make it. Okay? And we got some garlic too here. Okay, I like to get minced because I don't like to muck around with garlic. Oh, opening these things is a real chore. Uh, get a good helping of garlic in there, about a tablespoon. Right. Put this over here. Oh yeah, I've had, I've had some good pot pies. I've made myself over the years. All right, we're going to dress this onion. over here. The frozen one barely have any taste. Let's chop up our onion here. And she goes. We're going to use mm, I guess we can get away with the whole onion here. These were grown on the uh, grown on the rancho here. Right, really nice. Couple carrots. These up. It was 
really fun to grow carrots this year. Lord knows there's plenty of them. So we'll throw this on the recycle pond later. Eight snacks. Right in. We're not going to put the peas in for a while, okay? Peel a potato here. Okay, there's one peel. Funny, Fanny Kaplan's trying to grab the uh, potato peelings. All right, there we go. I'm going to make four slices, then turn it 90 degrees. Make some more slices, like so. A little funky part of the potato there, just take her on it. Trying to keep all the uh, pieces like uniform in size here. Go right in. I think this is going to be the perfect amount of uh, filling in here. chicken in too. Using the juices to be thawed in right there. And we're going to put some fire in the hole and we're going to get going right here. Moving that all together. I hope I have enough gas tonight. Did your cat just run in? Forget our dough is chilling here. Right, we've got some olive oil in here, so let's get going. We're not going to cut up the chicken until it's cooked a bit. Fire in the hole. There we go. Home cooking is the only way to go these days. All right, we got fire in the hole. We are underway. That's going to be our pot pie filling right there. It's going to cook down and reduce. We're going to add some peas later. If I have too much filling, I'll save it in a container and then uh, make, I'll make some pastries one night. I'll make some chicken pastries. To make sure everything is coated, I want to keep that chicken directly on the bottom there. That takes most of the heat. So I don't have to worry about overfilling because I can always save what may appear to be too much and roll out some more dough later. It'll actually be better if it's the next day to use it because it will have cooled down more. Do not 
not add salt yet because you'll just toughen the meat up. I'm going to add a little bit of pepper. People add salt too quickly. We've got some regular chicken stock tonight too. Uh, the gas is okay. We're just gonna make it. We're gonna make it camp. Right, if I have to switch to the other jug or finish this inside, I will. What do you live in, Rob? An apartment? I'm just working the vegetables around the meat. I want that piece of chicken to maintain contact with the wok. The wok is a great way to process and soften up our vegetables. Because our peas are delicate, we can add that at the end and the co-op private apartment. Okay, it's nice and big. Well, you know, what the heck? You got room for a couple of Venezuelan families up there? Eric, Ad Eric Adams wants to house a few with us. letting that chicken soak up a lot of heat there. I don't even care if it gets a little bit of a crust on the bottom, that's even better. Okay, because with color is flavor. Right. That's it. 50% of millennials in Gen Z live with that. How can anybody afford their own place these days? This, uh, this round of inflation just killed people. We can turn the heat down a tad. I'm just hoping the gas will make it through. piece of chicken over like so. Because the more you let that chicken go, the more you're going to be able to slice it easily. the pork and we're going to gradually slice that into small pieces, lifting it on the bottom of the pan. We got a nice bite-sized pieces here. This will help. This will help it cook a bit faster. We're actually going to turn that heat off for a minute. And 
I'm just cutting these into nice bite-sized pieces. That's the problem with a lot of pot pies you get these days. They don't have any meat in them at all. They have uh, crappy little, crappy little pieces of meat. That's not exactly what. Uh, that's not exactly what the doctor ordered. This way things will things will cook uniformly and we won't destroy our vegetables here. All right, I think that's perfect. We've got everything into nice bite-sized pieces of chicken there. All right, now we can add our salt in. We also want to add our secret weapon. Okay. Tablespoon of rice wine vinegar. This is going to tremendously deepen the flavor here, okay? Let's get our heat back on. All right. Heat is back on. We want this chicken to cook out now. And what we don't use, we can always turn into a chicken soup with the broth. Gas is on. Mm, this is going to be great. This is going to be delistable. The, pea, the carrots are in there. You don't want to add the peas too early, they'll turn to mush. We're just working that all around really well. She's coming along really good. Take your time, it's supposed to be fun. Oh, it smells great. We're getting a good uniform coating on all of the all of the chicken. And the potatoes are softening nicely without turning the mush. Because whatever's not done is gonna finish cooking when it goes into the uh, into the grill. So we're going to go ahead now. We're going to add our chicken stock here. We're going to add about the eight ounces there. We don't want to, we don't want like a super dry filling inside of this thing. Okay, that's going to be critical. We don't want that. We want this broth to absorb all of these flavors from this. 
But I think we're going to have enough gas to pull it off. Have an initial little taste. Mm. That's like bang on in flavor. That's like perfect. A little more. We're going to get a little cup here while that's coming up to temperature. I'm going to get a little cup and some flour. We're going to use that for thickening. Hey, Charles. We're going to add our peas in now too. Okay. Half a cup of peas in there. Now, to thicken this, you never want to add flour to, to something that's hot, okay? You never want to add it to the hot broth. You'll be making a huge mistake. Hey, we want this to all meld a little bit for maybe five or ten minutes. Hey, Nicole, how you doing, honey? We're making pot pie. We want this to all come together. I mean, kind of like, like it's a beef stew. Or I should say a chicken stew. Don't worry if you have too much, it can always be a good standalone. Add another can of stock to it, thin it out, and it becomes a nice chicken soup. Right. Now we're going to add some chicken stock. To a glass here, maybe about uh, two tablespoons. We're going to take some flour. And we're going to beat that in and make like a almost like a roux. It's not butter, but it is. This is going to be our thickening agent here. All right. Hey Jean de Thickney. All right. <clears throat> Maybe a little bit more. Don't add it too soon now. We're trying to make all these flavors come together good. That should be, that should be perfect there. I think everything's all come together really beautifully. Alright, let me get my other phone here.
what is for dinner in Rancho Kitchen Stadium tonight? Well, we're going to be making a pot pie and cooking it on the barbecue grill. Stay tuned. I think all the vegetables should be nice and soft now. Now we're going to go ahead and add our thickening agent here. That's a real compromise of how thick or how thin you want it, right? Too thick and it's going to slice like a pie, so you want to make sure that you don't waste all those glorious juices. Right. And give it a minute to thicken. Okay, that's thickening up really well. Okay, one more little shot. We should be good here. Right. Okay. Give it time to catch up to it. Alright, that's perfect. That's going to be perfect. Alright. Give it time to catch up. Alright. That is perfect. We can turn this off now. And we're going to pull this off the heat. Let's do that. Turn that off. Turn our gas off here. Okay. And we want that to cool. Hey, Joe. All right, that's got really nice, really nice thickening to it. Okay. It's not going to be dry. All right. That's really, really important. And if you think it needs a little bit added back, well, add it. All right, so you get exactly what you want. That's perfect. All right, it's a real balancing act. Yeah, it looks pretty good, Amanda, doesn't it? It's a real balancing act. We don't want this baby to be uh, dry in any way, shape, or form, and it'll continue to thicken there. All right, there we go. Let's take another. We got the gravy looking good there mm. Mm. man that is just bang on right there all right you can see there's still plenty of uh, plenty of juice down there no we don't really have too much in the way of flies we might tonight because there's not a breeze blowing so the mosquitoes might be up tonight. So we're, what we want to do is just move this around. Okay, and just let this cool off a bit. And believe it or not, we're mostly done making our pot pie. We just want to dissipate as much heat as possible. Okay, let's try a piece of chicken here. Absolutely delicious. Absolutely delicious. It works on both sides. More little spritz of salt there. More good. So I'm moving it around now so we can try to cool it off a bit. Normally you would chill this overnight and then add it to your crust in the morning, your pie, or whenever you're ready to cook. Okay, we don't have that luxury right now. So we're going to let that cool. We're going to put a few things away here and clear up the table here and get ready to, uh, get ready to roll this beast out. Everybody with me so far? There we are, Rosie. We're having a good time. All right, that's great.
Uh-uh, don't you get up on that table. No, no, no. That's perfect. That'll actually cool off pretty rapidly in a, in a walk there. I took it off of the hot part where it was sitting. Luckily, we had enough gas there. So let's have a beer. And let's let this cool down a little bit. You'll notice I did not use cornstarch tonight. Could I have used cornstarch? Yes, but it wouldn't have given the flavor component of a little bit of flour here. Choose your thickening agent wisely. So let's go over here and enjoy a beer a little bit. Uh, Okay. All right, here we go. Okay. I know those cats are ready to go. I'm keeping an eye on them. Trust and believe. They're getting really used to, they're getting really used to being around now, you know? Oh. Alright, it's been, it's been fun so far. No incident, everything is cooling down good, we're keeping an eye back there. This is the way cooking should always be, drama free. Alright, but there's usually nothing that you cook, there's nothing that you can't cook that you can't recover in my opinion right tiger are you limping today or are you better huh you guys ready to eat i guess they're ready to eat Man, is that delicious? While you guys are enjoying the cat feed, I'm going to clean up a few things.
want to clean off this table really well over here. Always do everything as if you're feeding other people. Good neatness, good control of chicken, and all that stuff. I've added back just a bit more. It helps cool it down a little bit. And we're just about ready. The potatoes are perfect. This is going to be a delicious pot pie. I'm not going to be you. This is going to be good. This is going to be abundanza, baby. Oh. It's kind of weird how the cat suddenly uh, like just, just took to us. Please hit the thumbs up button if you haven't yet. We're conquering pot pie. I'm going to have to change out that gas tomorrow. Valleys are all full. Yeah, there's not a there's not a breeze blowing in it. I can tell a southerly airflow came in. Tiger's walking a little bit better today. Hey Brian, yeah, Tiger's not limping as much today. June, you probably have the old steam heat. Just imagine if hot air didn't rise or heat didn't rise. Always Fanny Kaplan with the big appetite. <clears throat> it's not a bad cough, it's just a weed cough. Yeah, steam. Steam heat, that's really old school. Most everything is forced air now. I believe the rain when I see it. So far, I, so far, no rain. These guys are going to go nuts. They're like, where's the chicken? We know there's chicken. It'll be like a holdup with their little masks on. Where's the chicken? Man, Fanny Kaplan can put some food away. Good 
good appetite. Who's ready to put this baby together? Uh, we got our rollout table ready. We got our mixture is perfecto. Plenty of sauce. This is what we want. Looking good. No, she's probably mad last night because I didn't overfeed the cats. and the bottom crust we're going to be putting it into this skillet here Snitch your piece of chicken. Mmm, yum yum. baby out. This will be for the bottom sides. You, do it, you want to make sure that you keep the keep the surface floured above and below. Above and below. Right. I don't know if you guys can see. Yes, we should kind of buy a find a better position. Get this down there. I'll occasionally pick it up and throw it over. Okay, that looks pretty much we, we use this as a guide. Now remember we gotta come up the sides too. Perfect. Doesn't matter if we're not. That should be pretty good. Should hold together pretty well. Just kind of fall in, don't pull it in. You'll rip the dough up. Okay, just like so. Alright. Just like that. Alright. I'm 
pull that over just a tad that way. Just like so. If any hole develops, just plug it. Just like so. Okay. There we go. Work that around good. We can dock the bottom of it a little bit. Keep it from rising up, but it shouldn't really rise up too much. We don't want that to superheat while we're doing the other one. Let's set that aside. And now we're going to get ready with the tot. Yeah, it's going to be one main pot pie. We do it up on the ranch over here. turning it all the time here. Different angles just to get this baby really really rolled out well. You sit that there and that should be just about perfect. One more roll here. We're gonna flower our rolling pin. Alright. We're gonna roll this up now. Now we're going to sit this on the side, okay? We're going to bring our skillet back here. I'm going to add a little bit of dough up here. Okay, how does that look? Pretty good? Now we're going to take our filling. We're going to start our grill right now. We're going to put our baking stone on the bottom. Put our baking stone in. Turn the gas on. Okay. And there we go. I'm going to put a little bit of oil in the bottom. This will slightly protect the bottom from absorbing and becoming, uh, becoming too mushy. Let me get my... Uh, we're gonna also get an egg real quick. We're going to use the beaten egg to seal the sides here. Let me get a fork. Go. I'll beat that really well. That breaks up all the membrane. All right. That's very important to break that egg membrane. All right, let's go ahead and fill it. Making sure to get all of the juice. Very critical. I think 
we have the perfect amount of filling here, to be honest with you. And if you're watching, please like and subscribe. This is just a little bit of what we've been doing on the rancho here. Rustic cooking for years. How does that look? Let's, um, we're going to add a little spritz. Okay, of our uh, stock, our chicken stock here. And now we're going to go ahead and get our clothes here. We've got our filling in, the grill is lit. We'll see you for the finished product. Now we're gonna we're gonna do the edges here so that they seal up really well. It'll prevent bubbling over the side, it'll open up this. So it's kind of important that that be done. So let's go ahead. And let's carefully shouldn't really have any difficulty positioning the top crust on this baby. We're going to take the top crust and turn it underneath of the bottom one. And the egg is going to help seal it here. There's a little too much dough, just pull it pull it off. So what we want to make sure is that we really seal this edge very well. That'll prevent boil overs. Really seal that baby really well. If it makes a little bit of thicker crust in some areas, well people enjoy it. Okay. That's the way we look on that. Now we're going to take our fingers, we're going to do an edging around it. This is important, this is the last sealing step here. Because if you have an oven, you don't like stuff that over tops and hits the bottom. If I was cooking this in an oven, I would always put down some foil on a pan on the bottom. Okay. All right. And there is our edging on that. We're going to take the top of it and we're going to brush it now. going to give it a nice golden flavor a golden look to it right, we're sealing that all in there all right then we're gonna have some beer and let this break bake away that's what i like to see a nice rendition of the outdoor barbecue grill pot pie right there we're gonna vent the top of it now Give some pretty wide vents. Right, move it around a little bit. Make sure that that baby's able to vent really well. Here we go. There she goes, right there. And let's throw this baby into the gar barbecue grill and let's give an initial half hour here, okay? In she goes. So somebody can be a timer for me, if you don't mind. 
It is 7.45, so at 8.15, we'll take our first look at it. I'm going to quickly, yeah, on a barbecue grill. Yep. We always enjoy doing demonstration cooking and baking outside here. So to encourage people to get more use out of their barbecues year-round. So give me a minute here. I'm going to wash a few things. I like to make sure everything's basically cleaned up before I eat. I guess I should wipe that table off, eh? See, the cats are done. Well, I guess they're down there. I don't know. They're eating their second dinner. Just about there. some of this grease off of the table. That's perfect. Last thing we have to do is get this sucker cleaned. Right. I'm going to get all of the camera. Yeah, 
that's what I call I a great a effort every, tonight, guys. We're basically all cleaned up. It's time to reward ourselves with some good eating, right? Mm. That's what we're going to do. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to reward ourselves with some good eats. That's a wind blowing, not too much. Not really. Slight little, slight little breeze tonight. Let me do a quick section showing it in the barbecue as well. Generally, I like to keep the shorts about uh, 15 seconds, but sometimes 30 seconds is okay. Hey, James, how you doing? Yeah, I wonder if we're really going to get rain tonight. What do you guys think? Yeah, your name. I'm so glad that uh, Janet and the boss gave me that table. Try making one, it's a lot of fun. Use your barbecue grill. You guys remind me, we're going to have to get a fresh gas tomorrow. I think like Ronnie said, that gas is about had it. That's about it on that. Hey Rio, how are you? Yeah, please hit the thumbs up button. It's uh, it's probably still 70 degrees, which is unusual tonight. When are you going to put the tent up? I guess after Halloween. We're targeting November 1st. Yeah, doesn't that look good, Bluebird? Robin, I'm targeting November 1st, which is after Halloween. And should be just on the edge of the rainy season. And I know exactly, good night, Nino. I know exactly what I have to do to modify it to make sure it doesn't come down. I know how to do the corners. I know that it's critical that it be suspended from two points above. It's just a standard beer. 12 ounces, it's just a skinnier can. That's all. So, it's very tasty. I used two tablespoons of rice wine vinegar. Uh, you could alternatively use red wine vinegar if you wanted. These these vinegars, red wine and white wine vinegar, are critical for giving depth to flavor. Okay. Otherwise, you have what I call two-dimensional yeah, yeah. cooking. When I make shrimp fried rice and stuff, I'm always using um, uh, rice wine vinegar. It's part of the dealio, especially if I'm doing the cooking of the chicken or anything I do, I'm apt to use that because it deepens the flavor. Rice wine vinegar, salt, pepper, that's it. Okay, that's all I use. You wanna you wanna make sure you're not there to blast people with some kind of crazy scotch bonnet peppers that are going to blow their head off you want to keep your spicing low here because you want the flavor of the chicken what's the number one thing you want the chicken to shine through okay you want your crust to be tasty okay never added vinegar i'm telling you it's very very good you want your crust to be tasty 
and thirdly you want your vegetables to be uh, you know you don't want them to be the stars okay so whenever you're cooking you have to prioritize what flavor do you want front and center and I notice a lot of young chefs today when I go out and eat and I'll just try to have breakfast they're trying to tweak it or do some their own take on something and what they're apt to do these days is to use hot spices they grab for the pepper flakes they grab for the jalapeno peppers they grab for the uh, poblano peppers they grab for the even the hotter ones now it's all good for the first two bites but what happens to your taste buds after you take the first two bites your taste buds get knocked out and you're just eating to just fill your stomach at that point so it's all about when to step on the gas and when to step on the brake I think when it comes to uh, seasoning make some tomato pie you know I'm not quite sure if I would want tomato in a pie magic art but it'd be interesting all right I like my tomatoes in a red sauce, although I'll confess I've never had a tomato pie before. It sounds mildly intriguing. Alright, so those are my theories on, you know, let's just say Joni Portwood goes into a restaurant in um, Richmond, Kentucky, right, country vittles and country cooking. Oh, I don't know, June, just a lot of experience. Let's say Joni Portwood goes into Chucky's, uh, you know, country-style restaurant, whatever. And she says, man, I'm going to have me a mini pot pie. Yeah, man, hey, man, bring me over a pot pie. And they bring that thing over, and that's like, that's like spicy hot. She's going to be like, oh, hell no. It's not what you, it's not what you expect. What you're paying for is a chicken pot pie, not a, not a crazy spice Sichuanese chicken pot pie, okay? It's just, you leave and say, wow, that was just so hot, right? It's, that's the only thing you remember about it, right? Always, I think so, Alan, always prioritize what is the most important thing What's the predominant flavor you want to come through? It's the same reason I don't make apple pies with cinnamon and I don't make them with nutmeg because people tend to be a little heavy-handed. Take care, Shimei. They tend to be a little heavy-handed with nutmeg and cinnamon and the apple flavor gets diminished in them. Okay, hello, Cheryl S. But if you allow those apples to be front and center, which means you only have apples and sugar and cornstarch in there, you're going to be great. You're going to be great. All right. Oh, yeah, we got to let that pie sit a little bit or we'll burn the you-know-what out of ourselves in there. We're just going to attack that pie, right? That's what we do. So, now remember the chicken and all the vegetables are already cooked. Okay, so you're not risking any uh, food poisoning episode or anything if you, um, you know, depending on that. I like a really dark crust and uh, a lot of flavor, so that's what we're shooting for. Uh, good night, Alan. Good night. Yeah, check in on it tomorrow. Check out the finished product. It should be uh, it should be pretty good. At this point, there's not a lot that can go wrong. Hello, Adam. There's not a lot that can go wrong with it right now. So it's already getting a little brown around the edges, which is good. Right. Once it's in, that's kind of it. Hey, Lisa Ann, how are you, honey? 
once at this stage, there's really not a lot you can do to mess up the... Uh, yeah, we missed your shopping today, Cheryl. That was impromptu. Good thing I went... Good thing I went shopping because the freaking freezer wasn't even closed below. Um, I think it's going to take about 45 minutes. The trick is you want that to be nice and hot and everything all coming together inside of that thing. You miss cooking? Oh my god. Let's see if something, we might get the smell coming through. That's good. I backed the heat down a little bit. I'm trying to keep it around 400. It, this is the difficult part. Twenty-five is okay. We want to make sure it's good. Even a little bit of, uh, even a little char on it is good for a pie. It's really old school uh, style. <sighs> I've been lurking long enough to see and tell Patricia to catch <laughs> Yeah, they had their, they've had their two, two full helpings of wet food tonight. So rest easy, sleep well, fear not for the cats, for they have eaten. All right. Yeah, they have now, the little cats have taken off, that's it. So they're, boom, gone. Uh, uh. They have moved on to greener pastures. I'm going to be excited to see how this turns out. You need a backyard to set up a barbecue. Why don't you get in a code shared living arrangement? Take your monthly check and your stamps and find a, find a room in the house, right? That's what I did, right? Get in a co-shared arrangement. Here comes the uh, baby socks, always last to the party. All right. That way you get the use of a kitchen and, you, you know, it's, it ends up being a good deal. Oh, I'm glad you're here, Leah. We missed you around, honey. We missed you around. Always you and Jesse. Right. Jesse Scott. I guess he's harvested all the pecans. There goes. Airbnb is screwed up rooms. Oh, I man, I could. Uh, there's no problem sharing a house. I, I mean, I enjoy the company of sharing. I mean, some people like it, some people don't. I'd love to be, you know, my ultimate dream is to be in a boarding house with like eight or nine people. Oh. Uh. Hey, Catherine, how are you? You're not late, honey. You're just in time. It's good to see you tonight. I ran to the bathroom before I bought a house, yeah. Why not a boarding house? So you'd be a very sociable person. The best times I ever had was living in that that clapped out boarding house with the drunk landlady in in uh, the Mean Streets, Caroline Street in Baltimore. All right. It's just great. I prefer my, my, my own place. That's me. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, you know, I like to be in uh, hostels and stuff like that. It's fun. I'm not into the morning drinking. Hey, 71. A local university. Yeah, go to a local university student affairs bulletin board. Check it out. All right. You get the use of the house. You can cook. You can slap stuff. 
No, I don't plan to sell, honey. Where would I go? Adobo still use a lot of vinegar, so it doesn't need as much refrigeration. Yeah, that's cool. Only cook what you are going to eat. You know, buy your stuff just on the daily. You know, people don't want to share anymore. Well, I don't know. The amount of people going to Airbnbs is going to reduce dramatically coming up. Stuff bubbling in there before we pull it for sure. So I don't know, Joni. That I can't answer, honey. Let your conscience be your guide. We have vampires living in Airbnb. <laughs> Never a dog mommy in Vallejo. <laughs> Why don't you call your local Catholic parish and see if they have an exorcist that maybe could be dispatched to just kind of make sure your house is uh, clear, right? Never hurts. <laughs> if I had vampires next door, it would be a bloodbath, man. <laughs> well, that's cool, Joe. I don't know. We have to define what exactly is a vampirish behavior there. That's funny. Ah, uh, that's funny. They only come out at night and they are real pale. <laughs> they might be doing child sacrifices next door, Catherine. You better have the old man go over, right? Four, if you had a four bed and you had the people get room in the first, maybe. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Adam. I mean, those arrangements live, you know, they exist in, uh, you know, in university towns, of which Phoenix has many of them, right? And, uh, you know, it just, uh, it just couldn't be that difficult. Or maybe apply for a job at a hostel. Right, and clean the toilets and keep the place nice and you get a place to stay. Right. You got to think outside the box, bro. A couple more minutes. We're going to slide the baking rack underneath of the uh, skillet. It's a circus when they try it. <laughs> <laughs> it must be Romanians or something, I don't know. I got to be on the high like you were driving. Let's go ahead, lift it up and then we'll slide the rack underneath of it. You should write a book, Catherine. My neighbors, the vampires, park an RV at a campground. Let me get my, I don't know where my battery pack is. Hold on. Wouldn't that be a blip if we ran out of power suddenly? No, we're at 89%. Now, 
maybe from maybe they're maybe they're from the Carpathian Mountains. Maybe if you became a welder or something, certified welder, but that's a two-year program. It's not like you, you can pull a you can pull a piece of metal across another piece of metal that that's going to in some way, shape, or form be satisfactory. Right. Certified welders earn a hundred thousand bucks and more a year. Hey P2E. I don't know if you heard me earlier. Remember P2E, my story about how that 25 pound speaker fell off the wall at church because they hooked it onto the blocks which were only glued on and held on by a finished nail, some crappy uh, construction adhesive. And the thing fell down. I set it with screws and glue last week. And I wanted to come back today and hoist it up and mount it. Somebody put the speaker back up there using torque screws. They, they threw away my hardware, the original hardware, the four mounting uh, screws on it. And they didn't even test the speaker because the guts were ripped out when it fell off the wall. So now there's a speaker hung up that doesn't even function. And I said to myself, you know what? I'm not taking it down. Right? I'm not taking it down. There's no way. I'm done. It's like they say in Glen Gary, Glen Ross. Don't touch anything unless you know what the score is. All right? Somebody came in and thought they were doing a favor. And I'm sorry, that chapel's going to run on one speaker now. Hey, Zufo, how you doing? I'm not going to risk busting my nuts because this thing falls down when I try to remove it. Yeah, don't touch unless you know what the score is. It's not my, I'm not taking it down again. We tested it, I told the kid that works in the office, I said there's no way that I'm touching that. All right. All right. It doesn't work. I'm not, you know, I'm done with it. I'll move on to the next project. I have to install all new exit lights all over the place. I'm not even going to have to do that Friday. It made me so mad, though. It's like, where are the speaker? I look up on the wall. I'm like, oh, no. Somebody thought they were doing a favor. So I just left. I'm, I'm done, man. You know, I'm done on that deal. That's done. We want to let that baby really bake away. You know what I mean? P2E, people think that they're doing you a favor. So now everything I do, I got to leave a note on it that says, do not touch. Right. It needs to be repaired before it goes up. Sure. Right. Terminators. Well, I kind of blame the office because uh, I don't know. Do, do, you know. Uh, well, that's good. This is an unusual night. It's warm out here tonight because we have a potential rain coming. In. But you know, it's okay. So now I got to understand. Did I got to put a note on everything that's in progress? Don't touch anything. Yeah, tag it out. Do not touch. Do not hang. It needs internal repair. So you got a wasted, beautiful, big JBL speaker. <sighs> Sormophilia been rain. Oh, okay. We well, don't have flooding down in the battery, do you? Yeah, lock out, tag out, right? So now I live and learn. Right, I'm trying to map out the whole electrical system so there's a master thing because they have they have redundant secure. They have like three or four security systems that are still plugged in, of which three of us, three of them don't are aren't even used anymore. We're making it right now, Robbie. We have a. Um, pot pie gonna come out we made a homemade pot pie mm -hmm. 
You can always work as a day laborer, uh, Adam. Right, so that's that just, I left today, I said I'm out of here. More space could be beneficial, of course. Joni, in any kind of living vehicle you're gonna be in, in my, this is just my opinion, the more room that you have internally that you can still handle in a truck camper, the better it is, honey. You just want to make sure that truck camper is not going to fly apart when it goes down the road at the seams and all that. Yeah, room is good. I saw what you had when you were cooking inside. It looked okay. No, it's very difficult to get a high paying job. Baby socks. This is where you have to be patient with your pot pie. Hello, Vanilla Rain. True that, Magic Art. True that. Yeah, you need to have a skill in any kind of trade. You're looking at a two-year investment of time to be, you know, to be decently paid. Like I said, don't expect to pick up an arc welder and call yourself a welder. Right. Uh, I can clean cook Yeah, but dependability is an issue, Adam. It all sounds good going in, and then when you got to remove somebody that turns out to be a, a slob, then you have a real problem. Everybody, all these people promise the moon when they come in. And before you know it, it just, everything goes to shit. Right? Because you, a person can't change their basic nature. Right? If you're, and this I'm not applying this to you, but if a person is, is uh, slothful, they're not going to change. All right. If a person lives like a pig, there's no magic wand that's going to uh, fix that, right? It's baked in the cake. I mean, I'm kind of a slob. There's no force on planet Earth that's it's going to probably change that, right? I just have to accept it and just try to make baby steps and change stuff. Yeah, some apprenticeships are for, well, the, the you know, <laughs> to be an electrician, you really got to put the time in. That's a trade that can, that's a trade that can kill somebody. Right? They're not letting anybody just start mucking around with stuff. It's all kinds of theory and classroom time and all that stuff. The boss will tell you he had plenty of apprentices and stuff he trained up. So be a helper. Call up some companies and just be a helper. Expand your responsibilities as they get used to what you can do. I think our pie is about maybe five more minutes from being done, and we got to let that cool down a bit. It looks delicious. Yeah, your certification, of course. Your P2E, licensed journeyman electrician. Yeah, it's dangerous. Even the most experienced electricians get killed. Uh, yeah, you could be a doctor. That's right. I mean, uh, look at uh, look at a YouTube video called Donnie's Story. This guy got arced at a, a big, I don't know, fifty thousand volts, right? Panel. Spark came out, like fried the guy. Why you wear the big silver suits and it's very dangerous work. Right? Extremely dangerous work. Especially the guys that go up the PG and E towers and they can't they can't take those lines down. You 
watch these shorties of these guys over in Asia, like India and stuff. These guys are just rolling hot. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. It's, uh, you know, it's you got to be out there in all the weather, right? Wildfires and all that. Oh, you got a squirrel, you got a squirrel roast, Ronnie? <laughs> Yeah, you all get bit, that's it. I've been whacked plenty of times working on vacuum 400 volt DC stuff, blew me across the room. I've had big can capacitors blow up. Big electrolytics. Take both of our uh, both of our gases to be refilled tomorrow. I hate to say that, but oh. that's why I say never never touch any tube equipment with two hands because it's a path right across your heart, right? Plenty of TV repair guys, bzz, right? Met their maker. Yeah, I was, and you know, Ronnie, I had blanking on that microphone, too, to protect the microphone from being destroyed. It has automatic blanking in it, so you didn't get, like, one-tenth of the volume when that thing blew. And I got PCBs flying all over the place. This old 1960 electrolytic stunk. Shredding paper and crap everywhere. Do not touch. Don't ever touch with both. You know, don't probe with two hands. Don't do any of that stuff. Yeah. It's like when the bird touches that high voltage and just like keels over, right? All right, it's time to pull the beast. Got, looks like it's got a nice nice crust on it look at that right, nice flaky crust mm. Mm -mm -mm. right thing is you gotta let it cool off a little bit you burn that you know what out of yourself if you touch it going to get a good picture here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got the bottom crust too. I don't like a top just with one crust. There it is, the finished product. Stand by for the cutting orange count. Delicious. Maybe up and down the 
We'll have a little cover. Uh, we'll have a little cover pick too for the hangouts. Isn't that nice? We're gonna have to let that sit for a couple minutes and then we're gonna spoon that baby out. Ooh, you can always watch back the video of vanilla rain. Just your standard, uh, pretty much a standard filling. It just turned out particularly cool. Well, it's a good way to get burned. Well, thank you, Zupo. I appreciate that. So yeah, trades are uh, trades are demanding. Trades are definitely demanding. And you know, when people's lives depend on it, electricians don't mess around. Yeah, I'm gonna do a little. I'm doing a little shorty too. That's it, P. Carver. It'll be about 30 seconds, but you can watch the making in a, in a longer one, so. Rosie, what are you doing? Huh? Rosie, what are you doing? You know, these feral cats don't meow a lot. It has no real purpose to them. Kind of one of the one of the trademarks of them, right? Ooh, yeah, that's what I said. You can watch the long one and go over some of that pot pie. Don't you get up on that table? It's the kind of cat that'll touch the skillet, right? <laughs> Uh, we feed the food, they feed love, right? So I think it cooked about 45 minutes, Robin, give or take a couple minutes. I generally go by color because remember, the inside of the pot pie is already basically cooked. So what you're doing is just consolidating that together, encasing that in a crust. So I think I think like 45 to 50 minutes. Remember, I I don't have an easy time regulating the heat here, so I'm I'm usually running about 450 degrees, and that's not bad. But when we start pushing 500, we're starting to get up to the pizza, and we're gonna have to get some gas tomorrow too. Uh, that's good. That's good. That's good. We'll let that cool down a couple more minutes. I'm excited to see how it's going to taste. 
uh, set up for Mario Maria calendars. There's nothing wrong with that. I see them in the store. Don't, don't, don't. Yeah, this is an old bomb death because people enjoy, you know, people enjoy the experience of trying something new and expanding the use of a barbecue grill and things. Just I've, I've made apple pies, I've made layer cakes in there. Blackbird, did you eat? No, but I'm not. Well, I just made a chicken pot pie up here. You have a chicken pot pie? Yeah, come take a look at it and then decide if you want to eat or not. So. Oh, that sounds wonderful. I'm going to go in here right now. It's cooling off right there. Oh, you made a huge one. Well, it's not that huge. It's a seven-inch skillet, so you're welcome to share it if you want. So. Oh, that looks wonderful. Okay. Well, I got the paper plate, so I'll scoop some up for you. So. Okay, awesome. I'm going to go eat it here. Yep. I'm going to go into the bag. Yeah, what are you, sick? Yes. Did you keep that door open at night? It gets too cold, you know? No, I, I overdid it on Friday. And it was all like... And I said my body went through this well, That's understandable. Okay, well, I hope you feel better. Anyway, there'll be some pot pie for you here. Oh, tonight. that's not wonderful. All right, you smoke like a general. came out perfectly guys I kind of mucked up the cut because I laid the knife in it and it kind of came out but that's the way she looks Perfect crust. Mm. This will help bird feel better. Nice chunk of this. Thank you, June. You can see how nicely it uh, how nicely it cuts to there's still plenty of juice and everything else there just the way we like it top of that for burn. Uh. 
certainly not the hardest thing to cook. Give him a little more. Since he's not feeling well. That, that ends up being a nice a nice four serving pie there. That ended up being a nice four serving pie So time to get down on a good piece of it. This tastes so freaking good. Unlike a commercial pot pies, you get nice big chunks of chicken. Mm. I'm going to be honest with you, it exceeded my expectations tonight. Sorry, Robin. <laughs> I don't want Robin to ever be mad at me. You had me upset last night. Mm. Delicious. The, uh, the, the vegetables aren't all mushy. A little bit of spring. Get a good meal in you. Ooh. Yeah, I think he picked up a bug or something. There's a lot of stuff going around California right now. And I'm like, as long as I'm cooking, thank you, P2. It's like, as long as I'm cooking, I might as well just cook for two, so. A lot of stuff going around this year. And these are homegrown carrots from the Rancho Garden. It's got plenty of good sauce on it too, which is important. Tony Robbins, that's cool. Yeah, there's nothing like a good home cooked meal. Let's be positive, please. No negativism. Which I'll never for the life of me understand.
Ronnie, so was, was the squirrel localized to your community? Or did the whole state of Wisconsin go after? Yeah, homegrown. And very delicious because I don't like it when vegetables get really mushy in stews and stuff like that. I like it when they have a little bit of, you know, they still have a little bit of guts to them. The crust is what makes it good. Eat a lifetime worth of nothing. <laughs> yeah, well, these are good ones. They're not bad. These won't hurt you, people. Don't you dare get up on that table. I'm watching you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting my vaccines. We sure a lot of the same weather. Unfortunately, we shared your smoke this summer. Ronnie, it was kind of a tough summer up there, wasn't it? I would definitely, I would serve this in a, uh, I would serve this in a restaurant with no problem at all, proudly. All of a sudden, these little cats got very lively and uh, started coming around before you couldn't get, they wouldn't come within 50 feet of you. You could run a restaurant off of... Uh, Oh, it's raining. Here comes the rain, bird. It's raining. Here it is. Oh, okay. Thank you, Judy. We haven't had rain in so long. Yeah, they still got plenty of cat food. I've made sure to use it very carefully. Uh, this is one banging pot pie. Only supposed to be a few hours here. What it's going to do is hurt the grape harvest. It'll introduce mold. That's the real downside. It's got a few spots in it, but it wouldn't go anywhere. We learned so much about engineering. I don't like I don't like rain it. I don't like I like sunny weather. Tara likes it all gloomy and rainy and I like it nice and sunny. Yeah, we made it hold up. It'll be two years. These things were meant for two days on a weekend. 
we probably set the record for the longest standing one of these. Probably have this for breakfast tomorrow. I think pot pie for breakfast is. Yeah, I have the new one, but you know, I'm in no hurry to put it up because this looks very Halloweeny back here. Yeah, I like I like sunny days. I'm a, I've always been a person who liked sunny weather and. Which is why when I moved out here, I was so happy. I did turn off the watering system today. Pot pie is very good. Yeah, it's going to be good the next day. I'm going to cover this with foil. And I'm going to have some for breakfast tomorrow. Yeah, they still eat blueberry muffins, yeah. Yeah. But for me, it's like something I want to... I have the rain gauge up right now, honey. It's something that I only want, I only want a muffin like four times a year or something. And I want to make them myself and I want to make sure they're the big size muffins, not the little crappy ones. Yes ma'am, the rain gauge is up. The rain gauge is up. We'll probably just get spitting rain here. I don't know if it's going to be... I don't know if it's going to be too much or not. I'm kind of keeping half an eye on the cat so they don't jump up on the table. Well, let's put it this way, Joe. When I bake anything homemade or I make an a entree like that, I can control... I love scones. I can control the amount of salt and oil in it and fat. Okay, that's kind of important because I know when I get something commercially, it's going to be loaded with oil and it's going to be loaded with sodium. And I think in this whole recipe, we only used one teaspoon of uh, salt for the whole deal. So, that's important to me. What are we doing, Hop Along? Tiger, what are you doing? You're walking better today. He's like, I thought I heard rain out there. I thought I heard rain. I made some pretty tasty blueberry bread. Oh, and Judy, I love blueberry pancakes, but I don't want to have them too often, right? I want to I wanna have pancakes like once a month. Here we don't eat scones with chicken. We have any. Oh, I, we don't eat scones with chicken here, Joe. But I like raisin scones. I like um, blueberry scones. I like cherry scones. Right, and blackberry scones, pecan scones. Right, walnut scones. Scones are tremendous. It takes, it takes a deft touch to make a good, uh, you know, you start moving into biscuits and stuff like that. Sometimes people overwork the scone and, yeah, you know, right. uh, the air got cold. Man, it's very warm here, uh, Catherine. We have, <clears throat> like, I went out today, it was nice. It was nice and warm with a breeze blowing. But it was a weird kind of warm, right? So it's not it's not cold at all. Yeah, cranberry orange scones. You use dried fruit in them. It's going to be delicious. I bought a four-pound bag of raisins today for eleven bucks. <clears throat> Biscuits are an American thing, I think. And you really, any y'all down south know you have to have white lily flour to really make a good biscuit. A really good low protein uh, flour. What the hell are you eating? What do you got in your mouth? No, 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 no. What the hell do you got in your mouth? Uh, 
So I needed one of these knuckleheads to go in the house tonight. Well, we never see poutine down here, so. All right, that's one thing I missed having when I was in um, when I was in 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 Canada. Man, if if I go to Montreal, I am gonna I'm gonna gain five pounds. I know it. I know. I know. I'm gonna be having so much French food with creams and <laughs> yeah that's good June Rosie damn it son of a bitch Rosie These goofs were running all over the place in there. Uh, now this is my second beer tonight. I think I earned it. We went shopping tonight. We had our discussion in the afternoon. And we also knocked out a good pot pie. Of which I'm absolutely positively looking forward to having that for breakfast tomorrow. Possibly Wednesday too. So good, so good, so good, so good. Uh, let me cover it. This should be good enough to handle now. perfection tonight guys absolute perfection I could have had you all to a dinner party to knock out about three or four of those babies. Help yourselves. get a new one but this one performed much better tonight monarch brand so
true. You see, nobody got cheated on. Uh, nobody got cheated on chicken in that thing. I don't think I ever had peanut butter yet. You know the good news tonight? I hardly have any cleanup at all. At all. Right. Rosie. <coughs> dum dum. All right, guys. Well, I guess um, kind of depleted my battery pack here. I'm going to go ahead and close it out tonight. I'll tell you, it was an excellent night tonight. Uh, this is going to rank as one of my favorite live streams ever because, well, everything went right tonight. From the grocery shopping to the making of the pot pie was just uh, everything that I hoped it would be flaky and good and top and bottom. So I want to, number one, thank my wonderful moderators. I know Scottish Saren was in here earlier. We had Shimei and Ronnie and uh, Cheryl coming in here. I really appreciate everything that you guys do, ladies and gentlemen, all the time. I appreciate that. So, uh, for the rest of you, if you've not hit the thumbs up button, please, good to see you, Amanda, and everybody else, June, and uh, you, Joe, everybody else. Thank you, Lee. It's always good to see you, honey, Jerry, and everybody else. Catherine, thank you, honey, again for the uh, wonderful soy sauce and uh, put up a spy camera for your neighbor's uh, vampire house there. So. All right, Judy, thank you. Good night, everybody.